Hi, right, everyone, and welcome to TimingResearch.com's Analyze Your Trade, episode number 74 for April 23rd, uh, 2019. Today, we will be discussing your trade ideas. So over the last few days, about 40 people submitted up to five symbols each. And I've put the list together of the top requests, which you should be seeing uh, from my screen while, uh, or on your screen while I'm talking. Um, and we will get through as many of those as we can today. We're broadcasting live on YouTube at uh, our new time for the show of 4 p.m. Eastern. But you can also listen to the audio-only podcast version of all Timing Research episodes on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, or wherever else you listen to podcasts. Just search for Timing Research and subscribe. My name is David Cosmetter. I'm the creator of TimingResearch.com. And I have Matt Buckley here to moderate today. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Matt. Awesome, David. Uh, thanks again for having me. Podbeam. Man, I got to check that thing out. It seems like every week that goes by, there's a new uh, streaming, new something, man. I got to check yeah, out Podbeam. Just, uh, actually, just telling AJ before, and that's, that's uh, the service I use to post the... Uh, podcast versions, and it's also the one I use personally for listening to podcasts on my phone. The, the app I use, Pod, Podbeam. You I, crazy I like, kids and your technology. I like the uh, interface they have. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. I'm still used to sitting on the couch on the porch yelling at uh, kids to get off my lawn. So I gotta, I gotta check out Podbeam. All right, man. Hey, in the in the thick of it for for earnings week, and uh, David got uh, two 500 pound heads and a 250 pound head together uh, to do analyze your trade together. We got AJ Brown of Trading Trainer. Uh, dot com and of course the op the option professor uh jim kenny aj good to see you again my friend why don't you give um, all of our listeners and viewers obviously on podbeam uh, uh your background and and what you currently do with uh, with trading trainer yeah fantastic i'm aj brown with trading trainer and i've been doing trading since 1997 and we started trading trainer in 2002 uh, we've been giving daily insights and daily forecasts to our program participants since that time every day. Uh, and that's what we're doing now. We actually have a new program that we've been going for the last couple of years on selling premium. And that's really our big focus these days is on selling premium, although we still have our flagship product, the, the, um, the one where it's for full-time option traders. And of course, there's my pet project that I've been doing for 15 years, which is teaching inner city kids how to manage their por own portfolios and actually grow a portfolio from nothing. Matt, I see you talking, but I can't hear your voice. I think you're muted, uh, Matt. No, I appreciate that. Yeah, I got a, a, my microphone interconnect switch, which is my brain was off. Appreciate that. AJ's <laughs> a, a great guy, man. He uh, he definitely puts the ladder down. He's been doing that. Yeah, 50. My God, man, has it been that long? Yes. Uh, getting old, man, but keep up the, uh, the good work. And then good old Jim Kenny at the Option Professor, man. Give us your background and, and what you do at the OP. Sure. At Option Professor, we're providing education on the uses and the risks of the options. And basically, it's a complex subject matter. So I've been doing seminars both live and online for decades. And basically, we try to go over how to use them in different circumstances. One is for the cash flow. You want some cash flow on your stock or on your cash. Uh, there's a way to do it. Then, of course, we go into uh, limited risk uh, speculation. And then uh, we ended up with hedging, where you use puts and calls to try to protect your gains or to take a position in lieu of having a, um, a long position using uh, calls as a replacement trade from time to time. You know, in a market up like this and you have huge gains, uh, uh, replacement trades up here might not be the worst idea. If you're up 75 bucks on a stock and you could replace it with a $5 option, you do the math. Anyway, that's <laughs> what we're doing down here. So uh, let's get on with it and let's have some fun. That's that's a great point, man. It, it, it is time to start uh, slowly, gingerly, maybe looking to find what your nearest exit might be in case somebody else fire really quick. And usually it's the the heavy dudes swinging a lot of capital that they, they don't even yell fire. They kind of whisper it to their buddies over lunch in Chicago or New York. And then you hear about it. So I uh, love to hear uh, going forward what you guys are thinking about staying safe as we get hypoxic up here on, on Mount S&P 500. Uh, real quick, I'm Wiz. I'm um, Matthew Buck. Uh, did, my parents didn't name me that. So Matthew Buckley, I earned the call sign Wiz flying the, uh, actually I got my old squadron shirt on today, the F-18 Hornet uh, for about 15 years for the Navy, graduated from the Navy Fighter Weapons School, which many of you know is Top Gun. 
flew 44 uh, missions over uh, southern Iraq. Actually, very excited. In about two weeks behind me, the my boys will be in town. The Blue Angels will be down here in Fort Lauderdale for the Air and Sea Show. So looking forward to that. Uh, was a retail trader, jumped the fence, uh, worked at one of the largest volatility arbitrage firms in the world called uh, Peak Six Investments in the Chicago Board of Trade. Helped build a, a hedge fund when I was there. Helped build Options House, the retail brokerage, which is now E-Trade. Seems like every three years, it's like a Lunar New Year when another brokerage firm eats like Pac-Man and they all kind of eat each other. Uh, and then I uh, was founder and CEO of the Options News Network, ONN.TV, which actually got rolled into Options House. Been the CEO of Topkin Options for the past 10 years. And let's get airborne. Uh, so AJ, I'm going to, we'll go AJ, um, uh, and then uh, JK, and then Wiz. I like going last because I can either say you're all right or you're all wrong or a mixture. Uh, uh, AJ, we got, uh, we got the Death Star. Uh, coming up with earnings here soon. What's your take on earnings and then just overall Amazon in general, my friend? All right. So when it comes to earnings, of course, I like to play a volatility crush, volatility rush game. So right now we're looking for some sort of volatility crush. That means that everybody's been hedging their position on Amazon, not knowing what to expect, the confusion, the uncertainty. They start putting their buying pressure into options as hedges, which pushes the prices up. So I'm excited for the day after earnings for when that thing crashes down because you can make money on the volatility crush just as easy as the volatility rush. As far as directionally, your guess is as good as mine. So I'm not going to be playing that type of strategy. Instead, I'm going to be just playing the strategy on, let's see if we can use an option strategy, maybe something like a uh, um, some sort of spread type deal where I can make money and optimize it with the selection of the exercise prices and the exercise dates, make money on the volatility crush. That's a, that's a, that's a great point. As options traders, we love the volatility, you know, uncertainty as we go into an event where there's, where something is unknown, you pay that, uh, that increase in volatility. And then as AJ said, that crush, right? Uh, once something, it, it sounds common sense, but once something's known, it's known. Perfect example was the, uh, God, it seems like, well, it was years ago, the Brexit vote, like leading into the Brexit vote, Vol, even here in the United States went through the roof. And then when they voted, Vol crushed, but people were like, Hey, it's bad. They're leaving. I'm like, but it's known. Right. Yeah. Everybody was uncertain going in. Now that it's known, dude, people kind of forgot about it. And I could even tell you what's going on with that thing right now. So and Amazon specifically is one of those stocks that has a very cyclical rush crush. And Correct. so when it's up at the high, like it is right now, options are at a premium. This is when I want to be selling them. And then I, I'll go ahead and buy to close them uh, after the crush has happened. So I buy them back at a lower price after nobody, nobody's worried anymore, but that's exactly it. You summed it up. Well, Matt, that's exa And, and you, you countered right over the fence, uh, with the, with the, uh, with the ball there, because listen to what AJ said, when vols cheap, what do you do? You sell, uh, uh, you buy it. And when he said, Hey man, when that stuff gets expensive, I'm going to sell it with both hands. Um, Mr. Uh, Option professor, JK, what are you thinking about Amazon, the Death Star? Well, I think there's a lot of numbers that back the idea of the crush that he's talking about if he uh, means that uh, volatility is going to come back in on this thing because I'm looking at a uh, 50-day average of 1731, 200-day at 1744. So the averages are still inverted to the downside. And obviously, we're getting to be 200 bucks above the averages. So that's a rarefied air. Now also the volume. It's been averaging about 56, 5.6 million shares a day on a 200-day basis. And today it did 4 million. And uh, it's been averaging 4 million. So to me, the volume seems like it's drying up. Mm -hmm. Then you've got the earnings coming out and these uh, Bezos, didn't he come out and say that we're going to be spending a lot of money? So the earnings may look a little different. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the last time he said something about uh, Christmas not might not be as great as you thought, uh, the stock really got nailed. So my feeling is, is the setup here is for a reversal to the downside because of the overbought condition between the moving average and the price, uh, because the earnings are coming out. Uh, uh, there is zero short interest in this thing almost. Short interest is 0 0.96. So that was talk my about GPA in did. college. Yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, talk about everybody's in, right? So anyway, I would be, uh, like I say, when they come out and if the earnings are anything uh, other than robust, when you're at 90 or 100 uh, P ratio, there is no room for error. And um, if he comes out with some kind of a comment again about, you know, how they're spending a lot more money, so the earnings are going to dry up a little bit, uh, this thing would be susceptible. So, uh, you know, again, I would be looking for this thing to find a high point and then uh, 
uh, take a rollover. Yep. The, it's interesting you say that because if, if you listen to the to the CEO to the skipper's words, you, yeah, you you need to you need to take heed there. Uh, these guys are both right. I mean, Jeff Bezos, he's 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 known for that though. He's almost like, hey, if we make a penny this quarter, I'm going to fire somebody because I can't believe we didn't invest that or use it or something. It's the guy's kind of on record for saying, I, I, I don't, you know, money, making money. I mean, back in the old days, the three of us would look at PE. You know how antiquated that idea is when you look at, mm-hmm. I remember on the couple brokerage platforms I was using at the time, Amazon's PE was like a 3000. And I think it went up a decimal place because they stopped putting it on the, on the fundamentals page. Um, but anyway, it's so for me and, and my folks at TGO, I don't trade earnings. I used to, but uh, I know you can play the straddle, the strangle. Hey, hey the last time 10, uh, 10 times earnings happened on this stock, it did this. I'm like, nobody I know lets you trade off the left side of a chart. I don't care if the past 10, 10 times in earnings, Amazon moved up 10, uh, 10%, just for example, I get into it and that's the time it goes down 10%. You know, So <laughs> you, you always need to be trading kind of on the right side of the chart and and the three of us as options traders, you know, I, I, I try to, like AJ, I try to put the ladder down and help folks. Taking a look at the at the money straddle. So Amazon closed today at 19, 1923.77. Uh, there ain't no 1923.77 strike. So we got to kind of pick one of the ones that it's close to, right? 19, what did I pick? 1922. Oh, that's, that's May. Let's go so obviously the closest expiration is Friday's uh, earnings are inside of that. But look at this at the money. It's, I think there's 1922 and a half. Yeah. So the at the money straddle is pre- the options market, folks. So I love using this at cocktail parties, you know, when the, all the chart folks and everything like that. The only per- kind of group of people that predict where a stock's going to be is with options and that at the money straddle. So if you look at that for Amazon, it's pricing in, look at that move 78 or 80 times two. Look at this. I, if I can culturally appropriate, uh, what's her name's, you know, who's running for president at the top of the TP here. Look at this. There's a, the, the at the money straddle saying like 1840 up to what's that north of 2000. Right. And obviously it's not an exact science here. That should be around 58 ish, 60 percent or something like that. So, you know, some of you might say, all right, well, the options market is pricing in that Amazon's going to stay within this range. And as an options trader, I'll tell you, well, I'll take hey, that means to me, 40 percent of the time, the thing's going to have a move outside of that. Now, of course, this is for Friday, which is after earnings. So as AJ and these guys were briefing, it, there's going to be kind of that vol crush. Um but it doesn't help that what a day, two days before earnings, we've had this nice, you know, massive run uh, into earnings. But keep an eye on it, folks. Remember, earnings are rearward facing. They say, hey, this is how he did this quarter. That's usually the part of the conference call everybody sleeps through. And then when he clears his throat and goes, okay, looking forward, that's when people kind of sit up uh, in in their chair. I think it's a three thousand dollar stock in a year, year and a half, easily. Uh, but for right now, I'm you know, especially this week, I'm sitting on my hands as far as Amazon. I'm not going to place. I'm not going to throw a dart on Amazon. Uh, speaking of throwing darts, <laughs> AJ, what do you think about Netflix, man, and this whole streaming Netflix specifically, but the content war, man? Yeah. Well, to me, uh, Netflix is through its earnings. And it's having a little bit of a, a gain. But for me, the content wars is kind of like we don't know in the short duration who's going to win. So people are going to be doing exactly like you said with respect to Amazon. They're going to be sitting on their hands and watching. So that's going to create a sideways moving stock. I'm watching this level at $380 to see it's right now at about $385. It's just tipping. I mean, the high is. Uh, just tipping up, it closed at what 381.89. I'm watching this level to see if it reverses back down, maybe goes down to 355, 350. If I start to see that level of resistance and that level of support tested, I'd sell premium against this. I'd try to make it into a candidate where, if I can, whether it be uh, doing a diagonal where I buy a back month put up here at the top, or I buy a uh, when I'm down near testing the bottom and uh, hey AJ, real quick, if you're if you're trying to share your screen, I'll, at least I might not be seeing it. Oh, if, I wasn't, but I can. Let oh, me, sweet. Let me do that. Let me do that, dude. I'm a political science major, man. If you're, I'm, I'm trying to. I'm, I'm here with my crayons, trying to. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Let's see if that comes up. So yeah, I'm looking at this level Perfect. right here, up here at this 380. 
And I'd like to see it test. I'd like to make sure it has found a top, but I won't know that until I'm looking at the top in the rear view mirror. And I'd also like to see one more time that we test the bottom. If I can see that it's going to keep bouncing between about 380, 350, 355, that's a perfect candidate for me to, for the next three, four, even as much as six or seven months to try to set up a trade where every options expiration, every monthly options expiration, if I want to put more work into it, every weekly options expiration, I collect some sort of premium on this thing by selling, 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 and setting it up to expire worthless. So if I'm selling calls, I'll be wanting to sell them towards the top. If I'm selling puts towards the bottom, but I want to make sure that this thing is tested nicely. So for the next couple of days, I'm just an observer. But if it does test the top and the bottom, I don't mind selling premium against this thing and trying to turn it into something that gives me a little bit of cash flow every month. And it's a good point about the whole selling premium. This this thing's a mover. It's mm -hmm. not like it's a you know a boring CSX that we were talking about that just kind of slowly, slow and steady runs the race. It is susceptible to those, hey, breaking news, Disney's doing yep. this. Um, so yeah, so selling premium, I love it, man. It's uh, music to my ears. Um, Jim, what do you think, uh, Netflix, streaming wars? Yeah, well, with Netflix, uh, just to give you an idea, if you had 1,000 shares back in January of 18, it was worth 200 grand. Then it ran up to 400 grand. Then it came back down at 230 grand, and now it's back at 382. So this is obviously not the faint of heart kind of deal. Um, with regards to what it looks like now, you know, I think it looks like uh, many of the other ones, which means it's getting into rarefied air. Um, like uh, AJ was saying, though, the smart thing to do if you're in the red zone of overbought. And why would you consider this the red zone of overbought? Because you look at the RSI numbers are very big. You look at the stochastics, they're very big. You look at the VIX, it's very low. You look at April's coming to an end. You look at the valuations are going pretty wild. The uh, IPO frenzy is going on. You know, I've been around the block long enough to know that if I see uh, 17 signs that I'm in a bad neighborhood, you know, I don't need to be a genius to figure out that I better keep my guard up. So mm -hmm. the... And, of course, I was born in the Bronx, so you would know what a bad neighborhood looks like just because you went outside <laughs> when you were a kid. You know what I mean? No. Anyway, so that's how I feel. So how do I feel about uh, Netflix? I think, obviously, this thing going on with um, with Disney is um, is problematic, possibly. And I also think uh, that their little, uh, I would call it sneaky way, that they change their rate to generate income by going from 12 to 13 and hope nobody knows on their statement or whatever. <laughs> that's what I heard. I don't know. I'm just talking what I heard. Anyway, there's some things there that don't look like they're made out of concrete. And then the other thing is, is the volume seems to be drying up on everything as far as I'm seeing, because the average volume on uh, this stock is uh, 11 million shares average for 200 day. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the 50 day average is only seven and a half million. Today, it had a pretty good day because everyone's buying everything. And it was about nine million. Yeah. So it still, you know, looks to me like uh, we're extended and it looks like the volume's drying up and it looks like the enthusiasm's going off the graph. Yeah. And historically, that's been the time to uh, get a raincoat. <laughs> that's, I, that, man, I don't know if I could top that analysis at all. Um Yes, to, to to what all these guys just said. I got to be honest with you, man. The, the streaming, they, they were, yeah, years ago, man, five, six years ago, I was trading Netflix because it was it was solo Netflix, man. It was by, it, by itself. Apple jumped in the pool. Here comes Disney. My God, talk about the, the big kid at the pool jumping into the deep end uh, with a cannonball, man. Uh, a lot of new competition coming in, crowded market. You know, it's uh, like AJ said, if you're in it, maybe selling some premium against it. I, I can't be bullish either medium or, or long term on a Netflix because it is it, it, it's really getting to be a crowded uh, field. Now, who was it? Iger, uh, Disney, one of those guys, you know, when somebody's like, hey, what's your competition? They said, well, actually, none of these guys. Our competition is sleep. So, you know, somewhere in boardrooms, all these companies are like, how do we like get, it's not like Netflix, the little square is going to drop off your TV or something like that. We're just going to have 50 uh, of them on there and they're competing for our attention. So, uh, and it's fun, Jim, uh, funny, Jim, when you said, uh, oh, Netflix increased, you know, a little bit of their price. Um, I was worried about that until it's my brother-in-law's account and he's going to have to deal with that. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh you know, pop after, and I say that in jest. Of course, I have my own Netflix account. I wouldn't do that, but it's funny all over social media uh, where the memes, memes, I didn't even know how to say it, but you know, people are making fun of that. Like, whew, I thought that was a problem until I remembered it. It's not my Netflix account. So um, I'm a, even though they had earnings and it was semi decent, again, stocks move. They're, they're a predictor, right? They, they look into the future and I don't know, the, the future 
uh, ain't ain't super ain't super hot for me on uh, on Netflix. So okay. Oh my God, man! These these are in great order too. <laughs> AJ, <laughs> tell me your view on Tesla: short, medium, long, or if this thing's around in a couple of years, or it's a quadrillion dollar company. All right. Well, you know, I'm I'm looking at Tesla, and I actually see the opposite of of Netflix. So, you know, in this particular six month view, which a lot of people look at, you see, oh gosh, it's in a bearish, it's in a bearish move. But when I go and I look a little bit past the tip of my nose and I look at a two year weekly view, I'm just testing this level of support, right? I'm coming down to 260, 255, and I've been there before over the last two years. And so what that says to me is the same thing that I'm going to say. And you will, you'll notice that I, I, I ring the same bell because I think 2019 is all about sideways, choppy movements, unpredictable movements. And you're going to hear me say, I want to sell some premium against it and not play the directional game. If I test a bottom here and I won't know that I found a bottom until I look through the rear view mirror. But if I see that a bottom is found and I start on my way back up towards 290, you know, I'm going to look for an opportunity to turn this into a, a selling of premium. All right. I like that. It, not the most <laughs> bullish looking chart there with lower lows and uh, lower highs there. Uh, Jim, mm -hmm. what are you thinking? I'm thinking that uh, it uh, knocked on the door of 250 and it might be knocking on it one too many times. So uh, I think, uh, you know, obviously down here uh, in the last few years has been a time to take a bite right around 250, 260. So if that's the way you feel, go ahead and enjoy yourself. Um, but uh, again, you know, uh, to me, you know, a lot of technology, you know, I can get, you know, because it makes your life easier and it makes uh, things better and all that kind of stuff. But, uh, you know, he was on their TV the other day and he's saying that we're going to have all these people uh, driving without drivers uh, next, uh, the first quarter of next year. Yeah. And, you know, I've been surprised before, but uh, that's going to be a big surprise. So uh, if I start going down uh, the strip in Las Vegas and there's no people in the cars, uh, I'm going to say, wow, this is a modern wrong. environment. Where's George Jetson? Is he going to be around here pretty soon, too? You know? Actually, so, uh, the last lift I took at the Vegas Traders Expo, it was with a driverless car. Really? No That's what I'm trying to say. So I'm not. I, I'm obviously not the guy to look at. All I would say here is, is that if you're buying it, you definitely want it to stay above that 250 range. And if you're selling it, you are selling it into the abyss a little bit here. So you got to be careful. Uh, a throwback rally. You'd want this thing to definitely stay under 300 if you're negative, and you want to stay it above the 250, 245 area if you're positive. And those are your parameters. Yeah, I, I, you know, Tesla to me. Uh, I, I like, uh, you know, the idea of selling premium, you know, when, when something maneuvers like this, I mean, just in the span of a couple of weeks, this thing's, a, you know, 100 point, 200 point, uh, you know, or buck 50 point swing in, in a couple of weeks or in the matter of, of a tweet here, you know, hey, funding secured 420. Um, I, you know, and, and a dude that likes to tug on the cape of the SEC, um, there's a lot of headline risk. I mean, a year ago, uh, I predicted uh, Tesla's, uh, it's blown through cash like a drunken sailor, and I, I can speak from experience on that. Um, so it's blowing <laughs> through cash. Um, yeah. And, uh, you know, a, a company like that, man, it is, and, and we'll find out in a couple of days, but to be honest with you, man, it's, it might be a Ponzi scheme. I saw a report from, a, a, he's a medium Tesla analyst. The Tesla analysts are either absolute bulls or absolute bears. There's rare to find a middle, but the guy's like, you know, looking at all the books, it literally is, you know, they're, they're, they're built, using older people's money to, to fund the new cars. And it's, it ain't, it ain't looking too good for Tesla. You go into these factories or building cars like in a parking lot somewhere else. And I don't know. It's, um, I'm not long-term bullish on Tesla. It would be a trade uh, like AJ Shardy had up. I mean, this this just the, the lower highs and the lower lows and the headline risk. When when you, I think Tesla can survive and would be long-term bullish if they put an adult. Same thing with with Facebook and like a Zuckerberg. Take you got to give those dudes dudes credit, man. They're entrepreneurs. They they made a move. God bless them. But guys and, 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 and ladies who are great entrepreneurs sometimes make the worst CEOs. So if they bring in an adult, or actually in this case, you know, well, the board of directors is way too close to the guy. If they bring in, in an adult kind of uh, to, to run the place and keep a C letter in front of Zuckerberg or 
or this guy, you know, chief, you know, uh, chief booger eater, chief, uh, you know, the strategy guy who is out looking further in the horizon. I'd be bullish on it, but it, I think Elon Musk per is just too much uh, of an albatross around this uh, company's neck. I mean, he, what the hell was the name of his solar company? So, so, not Solyndra. I, I mean, the guy says, really yeah, 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 solar. So he, well, that's my company. I'm going to take the cash from that and dump it into this thing. If he hadn't done that, Tesla would have been bankrupt. So, short story long, I'm, I'm starting to ramble here. I'm bearish on Tesla. I don't like it. I, I just don't. I, I'm. I don't like it. And you know, cars spontaneously combusting uh, randomly. It, it's sad because every minute we've been on this webinar, probably there's a car crash uh, every second or type of thing. But th his his catch press right. Um, and, it and might the whole, be worth. Uh, hey, Wiz, what about uh, taking a look at the puts and uh, trying to sell a put if you have the cash in your account to pay for the stock if you get assigned? Not that a bad might, idea. That yeah. might, I mean, if you're bullish, you know, I'd rather uh, sell a 250 uh, uh, put for 25 bucks and be yep. signing up for 225, and even take maybe some of that premium and buy a call with it and do a reverse collar. Right. You know, those would be two strategies to investigate if you even think this might be good down here. That's I, a great. Yep. I, I like that strategy. Yep, cash secured put. Maybe if, if you're way too frosty, sell that upside uh, call to make it a collar, right? So yeah, I, I love that. You no, know, I'd, I'd, I'd take the premium. I'd buy a call with the. Oh, you'd buy. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, you'd actually turn it into like an afterburner to the upside, just in yeah, case. Yeah, I get a free look at the call, and I'd be signing up underneath for a strike price. So if it's going it. to go sideways to higher, I'm flat uh, to to up a little bit. If it goes in the toilet, I know where my buy price is. That's great. Yeah, it, 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 if. If you got the cash to do that, I, I would love to do that. Uh, good, great tactic. Um, where are we going? What is this weed? I'm not a, a AJ. What's canopy growth? I'm not a I'm not a CGC guy. So why don't you why don't you take a swing at this one? Uh, I'm I'm as foreign to this type of comp uh, company as as can be, um, <laughs> and the chart doesn't actually look very interesting to me for any of the strategies I might pull. It seems very very speculative. It's not something mm -hmm. I can plan out. So I would probably pass on this. Yeah. Uh, Jim, how about you, man? What, what, I, yeah, just, uh, the two things, yeah I, I obviously have my ears open, so I'm familiar with the uh, company. It is one of the leaders in the industry. The problem is, is they're looking for federal approval of this activity. And until you get federal approval on it, some people are concerned uh, of the um, – of the profitability and all that kind of stuff. So bottom line here is this is one of the Cadillacs I've been told in the industry, uh, but until the feds decide they want everybody smoking pot, it might be a tough industry. Well, yeah. So uh, Jim, let me pick your brain here. So, uh, let's go out and maybe look at a leap or something like that. Cause it sounds like no matter who ends up on stage, well, I, you know, one of the things that uh, I think, well, obviously president Trump and Jeff Sessions had a big out, out trade about uh, the recusal thing, but the it, Jeff Sessions was a huge, you know, anti weed guy, whereas, yeah. you know, Trump didn't, it's going to come up on the stage. And, uh, you know, I, I, if I had my druthers and I flip a coin, I think uh, Trump might actually be for, be for legalizing that any sort of what, what would be a long term if somebody's like, you know what, I think this is the election where uh, somebody who's running for president agrees to legalize it. And these guys rip, what, what would be a good, tactic well, I, I, think, both I, guys. I, yeah, I think trump would probably find it interesting because obviously it, it could be a money maker and he's a, a revenue a stream so you know obviously that's yep. what he's interested in is revenue streams and 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 businesses that grow mm -hmm. uh, with regards to um you know again these guys just bought another company recently so they're increasing their size increasing their size and uh, you know if this industry is going to happen uh then you know i think um uh, you know, I think that these guys will be in there. So, I mean, if you want to play, if you want to play the industry, this is uh, one of the uh, uh, bellwethers right now. AJ, what do you think about that? Would you know maybe you fly out in time to when's the election? The uh, fall of what? Fall of nineteen or no? Maybe, fall you of twenty twenty. So about eighteen months. Okay. So any uh, d d does that sound interesting to you? Do you buy, go out and buy some point eight Delta calls and put them in a filing cabinet? If you if somebody listening was just like, you know what, they might somebody might legalize it on the presidential s side. How would you get long term bullish on like a canopy? I'm with you. Uh, I'm with both of you in that. Number one, I do think that it's 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 not a matter of if; it's a matter of when. Yep. And secondly. Uh, I think that this would be one of the companies you'd want to invest in. Uh, but what, what I would do right now, again, I think I'd sit on the sideline and I know, I mean, you could be the type of uh, investor who invests in a lot of those little popcorn kernels, only expecting three out of 10 to pop. 
Mm -hmm. uh, but that's just not me. So I think that I'd probably watch and congratulate those people who make it. Okay, perfect. Yeah. If anything, you know, maybe you, you, you hop in your time machine, you fly all the way out to here like a Jan uh, 20. Uh, it, agreed. It's not a matter of if, but when. It still confuses me how you can go to prison in one state for having magic, uh, a magic plant and you, you drive across the state line. And all of a sudden, you're, you know, you're a felon in, in jail for 10 years. So we got to fix that in our republic. I think, uh, well, one of the main reasons... And I'm not going to super libertarian rant here, but the alcohol lobby, the, the biggest drug is alcohol. And for years, the alcohol lobby has just kept, you know, Congress from making it uh, a national. So it's going to be interesting. Maybe you buy some 0.8 uh, Delta calls uh, with a little skin uh, on them, some intrinsic, extrinsic value, and you put them in your, your filing cabinet and forget about them. Or... Uh, you know, maybe as it gets closer and you see that that issue is going to come up, it just might not, you know, when you're projecting your thoughts into the for, uh, future here, God forbid something, you know, terrorist wise happens or, you know, there's something bigger going on. Maybe if we have time later, we can talk about Iran and oil and where you guys see energy going. But uh, maybe you wait a little bit on, on canopy to see if uh, it is in fact there going is, to be there an is, issue. There definitely is the whole thing as well as the FDA is taking a closer look at CBD versus THC. True. And so yeah. that even makes me more apt to believe that it's more of a when than an if, but I'm still on the sidelines for just a little bit longer. I like it. Yep. That makes sense. Oh, well, actually good segue. Look at us, man. We actually do this for a living. Exxon Mobil. I wanted to talk about uh, energy. AJ over the weekend, the president, you know, when he came in and ripped up the nuke, the nuke deal with Iran uh, and said, nobody's getting oil from, uh, from Iran. Uh, he whispered to eight dudes, China, India, South Korea, Japan, like, I oh, know you guys are good. Well, May 2nd, they're not good. Uh, and oil is uh, having a nice run here because of that. But obviously, oil being elevated ain't necessarily good for our economy. So what's your take on ExxonMobil and the energy sector in general? Yeah. Well, OK. So I, when you look at any of these, Chevron, ExxonMobil, all these different, they all have the same technical stock pattern. They're all been on a little bit of a tear. And now they're stalled for the last couple of weeks. Uh, in my humble opinion, the way that I would be trading this, at least in the short duration, is probably some sort of stock replacement strategy on a breakout. So I'd be watching carefully. I'd be looking at, I'd, I'd determine what my thresholds were. And then after the threshold is crossed, I wouldn't just jump into the position. I'd look for some volatility, uh, not volatility, velocity in the movement of the money. And that's when I would jump in. So I would probably use some sort of like automatic trading tools to get into quick maybe day or two day positions on this. Mm -hmm. Otherwise I probably, it's a little bit too, again, you're going to hear this in my voice. It's probably a little bit too unstable for me. I like things that are a little bit more consistent. I'll give up reward any day to really corner my risk and manage my risk to a smaller amount. So uh, the overall, uh, you know, God, energy is such news headline driven. Yeah. And um I like, I'll be honest, I like to trade those candidates that just fly below the radar and have the mm -hmm. same, you know, don't have that type of exposure that energy does. It's it's funny you say that, AJ, because uh, as we just got done a, a live trade brief a little while ago, I said, you know what, folks, you can set your calendar to it. Anytime we get this like a little bit of extended high period of oil prices, guess what Maxine Waters is going to do in about two weeks? She's going to drag the CEO right. of the oil companies up for their uh, what, annual beating mm -hmm. in you know that why are oil prices so high and then we all have to sit there and chuckle as these ceos give them a lesson in supply and demand <laughs> right so, but you're right it is very headline driven and uh you know i, I was telling my folks today that uh, the the f-35s the newest joint strike fighter just landed the other day in the uae the united arab emirates which shockingly is two weeks in front of uh, the sanctions, uh, nobody's getting oil from Iran. And Iran, uh, Jim, a couple days ago said, you guys do that. We're going to close the Straits of Hormuz, which, of course, we've said is what? An act of war. So, Jim, what, what's your take on ExxonMobil and, uh, and the energy sector, I guess, in general? Yeah, well, uh, the energy sector I've been kind of positive on for a while. Now it's getting a little bit long in the tooth as far as the rally is concerned, and the news is so positive as well. So right now you really need to get um, Exxon uh, above 85 to get some clear sailing. It could stall out here. It certainly pays a great dividend while it's stalled out. A couple of ones that uh, are a little bit lower priced, and if they get going, may have some upside to them, is Phillips. 
and also mm -hmm. uh, Chevron, which went up to 112, pulled back to, back to 105. Now it's trading 108, 109. So if it starts taking out 112, that's that 1, 2, 3 formation that could be interesting. Uh, as far as that straight of Hormuz, the people that I was listening to think that there's a zero chance of that happening, but they did think it was a 40% chance that they might uh, do something against one of our Navy ships. Mm -hmm. So um, yep. uh, either way, it would uh, turn the temperature way up, and uh, and I think that temperature is on its way up anyway. So well, uh, well exactly. Yeah, yeah the, they were saying the Strait of Hormuz would make a lot of their neighbors and all the people that have some sympathy for them uh, to put thumbs down, whereas uh, having some interchange with the American stuff, uh, you know. They, other people may find that as uh, acceptable because they're being attacked or whatever. Like that. It's interesting. That's exactly right. That, that's well said. I mean, a third of the world's oil goes through here. I mean, one of the things that I think this president get, doesn't get enough uh, credit for is we're, we're not super energy dependent on the Middle East anymore. Thank God uh, right. that we can we can kind of handle ourselves. Uh, we have that strategic oil reserve. We got we got a lot of we got a lot of self stuff. But it's good that the other day Iran said, "Hey, man." You shut off our spigots. We're going to shut off this. Obviously, the fifth fleet based in Bahrain. Uh, I've been there. I've been. In, I've sailed through the Straits of Hormuz four times. Twice in the Abraham Lincoln. Twice in the Kitty Hawk. Every time we sailed through there, we were at general quarters. The ship was watertight. We were at full combat posture uh, because it, you know you never know if that's the day that a bunch of their gunboats run out and just go USS Cole on it. But as soon as Iran did all this stuff, you know, so the right side of the Gulf hates the left side, Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia picked up the phone and this is, it's sad that i mean it's just horrific that journalist or whatever the guy got you know just horribly killed by these saudis but trump you know trump's a new york real estate developer man he, he ain't used to dealing with the girl scouts he said hey man we we're in bed with some unsavory characters and guess what this is when he picks up the phone and does the hey your godfather did a favor for you now it's time because the saudis came out the other day and said hey don't worry about their output we got we'll we'll take the slack up um so yeah you're you're right at the the odds of them attacking or, or shutting the strait of hermuz are physically zero but them making a move uh, i remember what ronald reagan did i you know we're all old enough to remember that reagan uh, reflagged the kuwaiti tankers and made them put american flags on them um so uh, enough rambling these guys have, have have put a bow on it energy's seen a good run here can it go higher yeah we get some. Uh, I, I, the president ain't going to let just Iran keep going as an issue. He's, uh, you know, he tried to deal uh, with uh, with this guy in North Korea. He walked. He, the dude got up. They had three days left in Vietnam, and the president got up and left and said, "Nah, not good enough." Now what are they doing? Showing reprocessing activity at this nuke site, and they might launch uh, another bottle rocket. So oil. Might have a little bit of room to run here. The the CEOs are going to get beat up by Maxine Waters. You heard it here first. It's going to be interesting. So I'm uh, I'm going to sit on my hands as far as this, especially since it's earnings week. If you super want to get long, um, maybe this sector you look at the XLE, the Select Spider on uh, on energy, and maybe go out in time and, and buy some calls there. So how about how <laughs> one last? Wait, I just want to interject one thing on Exxon Mobil. Uh, you could keep it on a fairly short leash. The 50-day moving average is right around 80, mm -hmm. and the 200 days right around 79. So with the trading at 83, if you wanted to play ball, you could put it on a short leash. Mm -hmm. AJ, agree. Yeah, I agree. And I also just we were talking also about energy sector. I've been watching a lot of the homegrown companies like I've been trading Anadarko Petroleum for a while. And I noticed that they recently, like uh, a week or two ago, were acquired by Chevron. So some of the big names are making sure that they've got home investments. Right. They're making sure that they mm -hmm. can frack. I just keeping an eye on that as well. I think there's a lot of hedging both both not just in the financial markets around energy but also the companies are making sure that they have more than one uh, place to go for their energy. So that's kind of really interesting to watch as well. Yep. Yeah, or another way to play it folks is if you don't like the headline risk and your CEOs getting pulled up to Capitol Hill or stuff like that, the oil services sector ETF is interesting. The OIH. It's got like your Chesapeake's in there and your I think like NOV, national, you know, if, if you look at a ship or the pipes or refineries or the or the guts uh, of the oil industry, I mean, and these things, you know, when they buy a bunch of stuff, they bought a bunch of stuff like an ExxonMobil puts out 
uh, capital to to do this stuff. The uh, the oil se- services sector ETF ends up really uh, kicking it in the, in the full afterburner as well. So maybe write that down as something to look into uh, is the OIH. All right. Well, guys, if it ain't Boeing, I ain't going. So AJ, man, <laughs> obviously I flew a Boeing product for 15 years, but man, not good lately. What's your take? All right. Same thing. And and this is similar to what I think about the energy sector. So what I said about Exxon Mobil was I would trade this because I think it's going to break. I think it's consolidating as there's a bunch of uncertainty and confusion about what happens next. And then I don't know whether it's going to be good or bad news, but I do know that something is going to cause this to go up or down. I just know that it's not going to go sideways. So trading some sort of strategy that profits on something going up or down, not staying sideways, or playing it in the real short duration, like I described earlier, doing a stock replacement strategy on an actual breakout and timing it just right for a day or two day trade. But trading this in the long duration, uh, I'm not going to sell premium against this. I'm not going to um, try to Mm -hmm. trade this on any sort of trend. Yeah, uh, 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 Jim, a lot of just, I haven't seen a green shoot yet out of this. What's your take? My take is, uh, what it, I'll tell you, I've been following this a lot be, uh, because when we went up to a 450 area, the 200-day moving average was around 350, 355, and I was telling people, you know, you can't be up this high on Boeing and not have some kind of a pullback, and the next thing you knew, there was crashes. Whatever mm-hmm. the reason, it thing was going to have a correction because it was way overbought. Now, it comes down on the volume that just would take your dentures and throw them across the street, right? Mm-hmm. So that was a lot of people getting out. Yep. The volume was enormous. In fact, the 50-day volume volume is 8 million shares a day. We're back to normal volume now, right. around 4.5 million. So what's my point? My point is, is uh, these guys got orders coming out of their ears, and these guys got lawyers coming out of their ears, and I'm sure there'll be some uh, fault in maybe the equipment, but the pilots and their training and all that will probably take a lot of it as well. Yep. And uh, if I had a you know, so I had to make a trade on it. I would stay positive on this and I'd use my 200 day moving average as my line in the sand, which is rising now and it's at 362. Mm-hmm. So again, uh, I wouldn't get no- negative on a company that pretty much has a monopoly on stuff, who has orders coming out of their ears, uh, who is extremely well run and is still trading above its 200 day moving average and yep. the 200 day moving average is rising. So I'm not going to sell that company. Yeah, no, it's, it's <laughs> you know, and as, as a typical aviator, after a mishap, I'm going to dance all over the pilot's graves, which is sad because the four dudes in those planes deserve to die. Aircraft, uh, aviation is a self-cleaning oven. The people sitting behind them did not. Absolute. I mean, the guy in the right seat of the uh, of the Lion Air or the Ethiopia jet had 200 hours. I'm in Fort Lauderdale. I'm looking at my window. The dude flying that banner down, you know, saying drink, I forget the bar, he's, <laughs> has more than 200 hours, folks. The, the Yes, there's some air data feedback uh, that they fixed. Boeing's already fixed it. I mean, they, ch- you know, change one and make it a zero. And and this, this little bit of a flaw, the first thing I was taught in naval flight training, ANC, aviate, navigate, communicate. You fly the airplane. Don't navigate at that point if something's horrifically going on because it doesn't, you're going right where you're going into the ground. So navigation's out the window and stop talking to people. And both mishaps, the guys did in the in the uh, in the last one, system screws up, they turn off the autopilot and it, they recover. They're like, wow, whew, that was close. They put the damn autopilot back on, the thing goes nose over, they fight it, they disconnect it, they fly the airplane again. They put the thing back, back on, on four times. Awful. So again, you, you, aviation, like I said, is a self-cleaning oven. Uh, and, and I, but as these guys are saying too, Boeing ain't going out of business anytime soon. Donald Trump is friends with the president of Boeing. The, the one I'm long, I'm long-term bullish on Boeing short-term. I don't know, man. I, there's no way this guy can get on the conference call and give a forward look, you know, to maybe the next couple quarters and be absolutely blowing smoke. Two months ago, after all this stuff happened, the Wall Street Journal breaking news headline was FBI, you know, FAA, yay, investigations. FBI opens investigation into Boeing. And the FBI doesn't wake up one day and go, you know what, we're bored. What do you guys want to do? I don't know. Let's investigate. But if they believe something criminal happened, that's a big deal. 
But you guys know as well as I do, any sort of litigation, especially against this type of company, uh, you know, I'll be dead and buried before they figure this stuff out. So tragedy in the short run, it's a great airplane, man, uh, or airplane manufacturer. And uh, I, I don't think we're going to talk about it today, but it, I know they make commercial aircraft. I flew it as a fighter aircraft. The whole defense sector, man, is going to come back alive on... You know, I, I tell people at Top Gun Options, I wear two two suits. I wear a, a business suit and a flight suit type of thing as an American. Um, uh, but as Gordon Gecko, you know, uh, we just talked about Iran, North Korea, a lot of potential stuff happening that's bad. Boeing building drones and this and that. I, I mean, long-term bullish on Boeing. And let me wrap it up there since we, we, we need to move on. But long-term bullish on Boeing. Let's see what earnings have to say uh, before we, we jump into it. And Boeing um, has a ton of lobbyists. I'm based right now in Washington, D.C., and I know how many lobbyists they have. Uh, in in DC. So in addition to the lawyers and the, you know, all the things that uh, Jim mentioned, they yep. have tons of lobbyists as well. That's a great point. Yeah, yeah, they're they're yeah. You you kind of have a government put more or less yeah. underneath Boeing. I mean, from our tankers yeah. to our bombers. Yep. You know, it ain't going out of business anytime soon. You know, last summer, last summer I took the kids to DC. And uh, I was a little bit surprised, this huge, huge building and the words Boeing across it. And I go, yeah. I thought they were on Whidbey Island in Seattle. How the hell did they get to D.C.? Across yeah. the street from the Pentagon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yep. yep. Exactly. I, I, th I think there might be a tunnel that they go back and forth during lunch. Doubt and it. And hang out. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it either. So yeah, that that's this is the the defense complex that Eisenhower warned us about. But so take that, folks, for short term chop. Maybe some long term, uh, some yes. long term vertical growth back up to the four fifties, like like these guys were talking about. All right, and uh, uh, AJ, I, I have no idea. I'm gonna uh, say I'm ignorant here. Analy Capital Management. Never heard of it. Don't trade it. How about you? Don't know it. Yeah, A N L Y. I know, I know it. So I'll give you two seconds. I don't know it like I'm an expert on it, but I followed it. Uh, basically, you take this thing on because it's a REIT, and you take this thing on because it pays uh, 1190 uh, yield. Dividend. But when you're getting ah, 1190 okay. yield, you know, when you're getting 1190 yield, obviously the antenna's got to go up if you are born some time after last night and realize <laughs> they have to be doing some things to create that kind of cash flow. Plus sure. you also got to know why well, you got to wonder how much of that 1190 is return of your principal versus just cash flow. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes these people, they change the, uh, the distribution and that's where last year in late 2017, you're at uh, 12 and $13 and now you're down at 10. So that's like a 30% drop. You know, if you make 11, but you lose 30% of your principal, that math doesn't work out so good. Mm -hmm. So the bottom line is this, uh, people buy this for the cash flow. They buy it for the, uh, uh, for the REIT and they are um, obviously loving the cash flow, but you've got to be careful how much of the cash flow is return of principal. Cause that's not doing you very much paying your own money back. And secondly, you're always got to be wary if they're going to cut the distribution because if they do that, then it's bar the door, Katie. So a lot of people do suggest it for people who want to take aggressive risk in the income market. Mm -hmm. uh, and even large firms have even put it on their recommended list. Uh, you know, so it is a big company that people follow. It's fourteen billion dollar market cap, so it's not mom and pop. But uh, you're not uh, dancing with, uh, you know, uh, little Bo Peep either. You know, these guys can cut distributions, return your capital, all kinds of shenanigans. So you know, yeah. uh, play with, play, you know, play with the knife. You know, hopefully you don't get cut. Correct. Yeah. You know, whenever you see these high yield uh, type of things, they can turn that into a zero yield in the blink of an eye with a couple votes in the boardroom to go do something else with that too. So it's a very good. Uh, very good point. All right, let's go to another Death Star. If we talked about Amazon earlier, AJ, what about the other? Uh, well, I'm not going to call it Alderaan because that got blown up by the Death Star. How about Microsoft? Now, Microsoft has a little bit different uh, uh, mentality, right? They're going after um, the, whoever it was is no longer at the helm who was trying to get into all the retail markets with all the different components. Now we're talking about uh, being an enterprise solution uh mm -hmm. so you know it, it it may switching from b to c to b to b whereas amazon is completely uh b to c we might have a little i'm looking at the various charts i'm not sharing anything because i mm -hmm. you know this is more of something where i think i could actually buy into the long-term trend on this 
I know that it's overbought, but whenever you lose, use a leading indicator, things can stay overbought for months or years. Sure. Uh, but I, I'm thinking short or medium term trades on this one, just using my, my uh, trend following type uh, trailing stops and things like that. And using maybe a leveraged option position if I wanted to kind of turbocharge that. That's my initial thoughts on Microsoft. Uh, I'd have to research it further, but the the, the charts tell me that. Yeah, uh, it, it's interesting. I mean, this is well, uh, uh, Jim. What's your take on Microsoft? Well, real quick, obviously, bad mouthing Microsoft's like bad mouthing Santa Claus because it keeps bringing <laughs> presents all the time. But um, I would say that it is very similar to the entire board. You know, if you're a believer, as I am, that is very possible 2950 to 3050 is uh, going to be at least a temporary end in the game. Uh, then this is one of the obviously poster childs for that. So we could go up to 130 or 132 and then have some trouble. I personally would just be looking for formation up here. That would give me some idea that the market might roll over. You don't step in front of a freight train, but if the freight train starts stalling and then after a week it doesn't make a new high, now you got a point yeah. to defend against, and then you could take your shot. Uh, very similar to the rest of the board, uh, the average volume on a 200-day basis is 30 million shares a day, and now we're trading 22. So yep. if it's such a great market, where's the volume? Right. So, again, you know, I could be, uh, you know, a guy trying to, you know, blow out the candles and everybody wants to keep going. But, you know, I'm <laughs> thinking that we're getting near the red zone and red zone is twenty nine fifty uh, to thirty fifty. And my feeling is it's time to look for patterns or some some situation that would indicate uh, that it is running out of steam and rolling over and mm -hmm. that you have an actual point to defend against. Because that's what you do. You don't just say, hey, it's uh, all time highs. I think I'll sell today. Well, you know, that's good if you want to play Russia really. Play. No, but yeah, that's throwing. Either, yeah, yeah. If uh, you want to be a speculative, a speculative uh, shorter, you yeah. have to wait for it to stop making new highs. Duh. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now, yeah, yeah, you're gonna find out that oven's hot. Uh, that oven's hot pretty quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. We got earnings uh, tomorrow, AMC aftermarket close. So obviously, I wouldn't be placing any trade today. I think uh, I'd be looking at a medium trade out until you're ready for this. Right there, June maybe to J July to be safe, and here's why. The government, actually, not, well, part of the government, the uh, Pentagon is getting ready to announce its cloud winner. It's essentially it's it's booger eater winner. And the only two left in the race are Amazon and Microsoft. And those are really the only two that can really have the capacity to do this now. The Pentagon obviously can make independent decisions, but if you think Donald Trump and Jeff Bezos are sending each other Christmas cards, you're a fool. Um, it, Jeff Bezos has done, I'd say, more of a decent job flying under the political radar as opposed to like uh, a Zuck or Jack Dorsey over at Twitter or you know some of the other uh, Google. Um, you know, you, you Google Trump's name a couple months ago, and it was like five, 19 pages of negative stories. Um, but what I'm getting at is. The dude owns the Washington Post, too. Uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, uh, Bill Gates. Kind of been quiet as a field mouse. And obviously, he's not the skipper right now. But, uh, you know, that guy's got 51% of the vote no matter what. I like a medium-term trade. Even, it, but it does, like these guys said, man, that's a hell of – that's a – from the from the Fed, okay, I'm, I'm going to love everybody bottom here. Uh, that's a monster run, a 32% run since that um, the Fed uh, decided to call uncle. Phew. That's way overbought here, like these guys just said. But how do you know it's overbought? You look at the left side of the chart, and it's down here, and you go, wow, it was overbought at that moment. Who knows if it is? Uh, to me, I, I, it's a more of a speculative play, not speculative in the sense that it it's, might be out of business tomorrow. Uh, like you know, <laughs> like Jim said, you're talking against Santa Claus. I'm saying I would maybe look to buy some calls out into the summer because I, I want Amazon to win that contract. I think it should. We could talk about that over a beer. I got to be honest with you. I think it might be Microsoft. So I'm a, I'm a medium bullish guy uh, on this. And to be honest with you, using calls like these guys will tell you, I'm going to bet on both. <laughs> I'm going to bet on, you know, it's not like if I bought some Amazon calls out th this summer, like they're going to end up losing money anyway. So it'll be interesting to see what, what happens with the government uh, cloud contract there. So, okay, let's do one more real quick and then we'll do our wrap up because it's Cisco. So AJ, what do you think about this one, man? It's, it's a loved name. It's almost like a junior Santa Claus, like Microsoft. What do you think? Let me pull up the chart really quick. Ah, same. I'm going to say just same. Just in the nick of time. Same thing with Microsoft. I'll trade this thing uh, and I'll wait for it to tell me that it's done. 
I like that. So uh, let me pull up a chart here. While I'm pulling up my chart, Jimbo, what do you think? Yeah, well, uh, the semiconductors have just gone through the roof ridiculous, and Cisco has had a 50% jump almost uh, since the bottom uh, of the uh, of the True. big sell-off in December, yeah. January. So, you know, uh, again, similar to the rest, uh, we have uh, average 22 million shares on a 200-day basis, and now we're trading 16. So the air's getting a little thin, the volume's mm -hmm. getting a little thinner, and now don't step in front of a freight train, but see if you can get a pattern you can play against and uh, and see what happens. I mean, yeah, I mean, these guys know this Wall Street isms or isms because sometimes they're true. I mean, look at that. Yeah, 41, whatever, almost 50 percent climb schedule uh, since that bottom. Obviously, the trend is your friend and don't fight it and all that type of stuff. But they do have earnings on May 15th. I wouldn't be a short term jump in here right now because if I did, you know, the only people who say that they bought something here are dudes at cocktail parties that you just are annoying as hell. Nobody did that. So nobody's really, I mean, they could have held through here and then obviously, or added to it down there. Um, but I, I probably wait for earnings because maybe if it is weak or maybe a miss or doing the standard, hey, we can't hit the ball over the net, so we lowered the net type of beat. Um, maybe there is some profit taking around earnings and then it resumes its client. I just don't, I, I mean, this thing, you know, take a look at a two-year chart. It's the gift that keeps on giving. So um, I like it. All right, fellas, I'll tell you what, uh, good session. Had a great time. Always love working with these two gentlemen here. AJ, why don't you do us all a favor? How can the folks that are uh, watching get a hold of you or, or give a test flight or kind of do a drive-by yeah. of Trading Trainer? Two things. Uh, you can come and attend my free webinar replay workshop. So that's at option investing, not options, but optioninvesting.org forward slash workshop. And if you want to check out my new product, the one on premium selling, where we talk about some of the stuff I was talking today, including what Jim mentioned, which was collaring the positions with protective put and call trades, uh, check out my new product called the Instant Income Calendar, optioninvesting.org forward slash IIC. That's awesome. All right, Jim, how about uh, how do we track you down over the OP? Yeah, real quick, you go to Option Professor. Again, it's singular, so that's uh, a common thread. Uh, OptionProfessor.com. And then you'll get a link where you can go and listen to my weekly broadcast where I go over not only stocks, but bonds and gold and uh, emerging markets and currency, a lot of stuff, oil. So we go over that once a week in a session that's free of charge at OptionProfessor.com. You get the link. More importantly, everybody who's listening now, I've been doing this for decades. And obviously, I hope you understand that I have quite a bit of experience with investing. So if you have something you're in now, you have something you're looking at, you have something your brother Joe told you about that you want to run by me, simply shoot me an email, optionprofessor at gmail.com. Put some contact information in there and your question. I'll come back to you and I'll give you my observation, my view on it, and you could add it, add it into your mix and hopefully it'll be helpful. All right. I uh, love it. I love working with you guys. AJ, good to see you. Jim, always uh, a pleasure. Hopefully we can work together again soon. Um, Friday, we're actually kicking off our newest live trade brief. It's it's a, it's a, our least expensive service. It's only 97 uh, bucks a month or a nice 25% annual uh, uh, membership there. Uh, if you if you head to go.topkinoptions.com slash solo, you can get access to it. You ready for what it is? Amazon all day, all night. So one day a week for you know about 30 minutes to an hour, we're just going to focus on Amazon. I talk to a lot of folks, you know, when I do some of my personal coaching, I take a look at their stuff. I, one of my doctor friends down here, he had 33 positions. I mean, I got Agita looking at everything and the guy has a day job. Um, so we're actually going to be uh, talking about like how you can be your own, you know, market maker. I have buddies who are market makers in Amazon or Apple. They don't even know a stock market exists. Amazon goes up, they're bullish. It moves sideways, they trade neutral uh, tactics, it goes down, they get bearish on it. So we're actually going to do that. You guys, uh, a lot of my members asked for it, so maybe uh, some other folks will be interested in it. Yeah, solo, we call it Solo Friday because we're just going to be trading Amazon. Well, that's a little um, a bit of a misnomer because we're actually going to trade the XLY too because the XLY currently is 25% of Amazon. So if you can, you know, I think if all of us chipped in together, we might be able to buy one contract, one synthetic stock contract uh, out into the future with that. Uh, but maybe we could uh, we could cobble together a little bit easier and get into XLY. So maybe give that a shot for only uh, 97 bucks. So there you go, David. We got two minutes, uh, actually one minute, actually 50 seconds. Look at that. We are on time, on target. That's our mission objective so thank you for having me as a host and look forward to working with you guys again soon 
Yeah, perfect timing and uh, lots of great uh, info this episode. So uh, just a quick reminder to everyone, be sure to subscribe to Timing Research on YouTube and your favorite podcast directory. Uh, you can also go to timingresearch.com to get access to uh, the archives of uh, this or any of the past shows. Uh, be sure to join us next week. Uh, both shows will be back. Um, Crowd Forecast News, Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern and uh, analyze your trade the next episode of this show tuesday at 4 p.m eastern time uh on the schedule for next week i have uh, jake bernstein on for the first time also jim will be back as well as mark Sachs, neil batho and uh brian clindworth and i uh, just want to thank all my guests again for this episode aj brown of tradingtrainer.com jim kenny of optionprofessor.com and matt buckley of topgunoptions.com Thanks, everyone. See you, fellas. Take care, everybody.